Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this part of this air hockey tutorial series, we are gonna set a limit to how many goals there can be before the game restarts. And when that happens, we wanna show a UI. The UI is gonna say if we won or if we lost the game, and we will have the option to click on a button and play again. So let's add the UI first. So we have a canvas over here, and in this canvas, we have these two text objects. AI score text and player score text. We want to select the canvas from the hierarchy and press on Ctrl D, which is going to duplicate it. And we want to name this canvas restart. The previous canvas is going to be called canvas game, so we can actually distinguish between them. But now the canvas restart contains the same things as canvas game. We want to delete all of this. And we want to right click on canvas restart and select UI and panel. We want to delete this source image, so just press on delete. And the color should be more opaque, so select it and drag it a bit to the right, something like 200 is probably good. But now you can see that only the background and the canvas game is actually colored by this color of this image inside panel. The two players and the puck are not affected by this at all. What we want to do to change that is to go to the canvas restart and here in the order in layer put some huge value like for example 100 and as you can see now the whole contents of the screen are colored. So once we have that done we want to add two texts to this panel. So just right click UI text and this first text is gonna be called win txt and this is gonna display whenever we win. We want to set it to stretch to the sides and the left offset and right offset are gonna be zero. We can set the Y position to be around 100 and the height should be definitely more than 30, something like 200 is good. Let's center the text horizontally and vertically and the font size should be bigger obviously and we also wanna change the font. So let's click on this circle here and by the way, if you don't have these fonts over here, you should go to the fifth part of this tutorial series, where you will be able to download them from the link in the video description. And from here we want to select M plus 1M bold. Alright, and now this text is gonna be saying, you win! Awesome, and now we can just duplicate this win text, so Control D. This is gonna be called lose text, and this is gonna say, you lose. Alright, and now to see just one of these texts, we can click on this check mark here to disable it. So now the lose text is disabled and win text is enabled. And we want to add one last thing to this panel and that is a button which we are gonna press when we want to restart the game. So just right click UI button. This is gonna be called restart BTN. Now this is gonna be 600 by 200. And we want to set it a bit down so negative 200 on the Y axis should be just right. Now the color of this button should be green. So we want to go over here to color and choose a nice green one. And what is this button going to display? That's right, it's going to say restart. We also want to change the font to be the bold one from M+. The size is going to be bigger. And basically that's all that we need to do in this canvas restart. What we want to do next is add a UI manager script. And we want to open it up in Visual Studio. And we can get rid of these using statements. And also delete the contents of this UI manager class. We want to add game object fields which are gonna hold canvas game and canvas restart. Because we will want to enable them and disable them. So that when the restart canvas is showing the canvas game is not gonna show and vice versa. So public game object canvas game and also public game object canvas restart. For the canvas restart we want to keep track of win text and lose text. And we also want to disable them and enable them. So we are gonna keep track of game objects. And now let's go back to the Unity editor and let's drag this UI manager script onto scene manager. And we want to move up this script in this game object so it's more visible. And as you can see these four fields are a mess and we want to add five more fields. So it's going to be totally cluttered and we will need to read all of the names of the fields to figure out what it does and where it is from. 
To prevent that from happening, we want to add headers to these fields. So let's go back to the script and to the canvas game and canvas restart, we want to add a header canvas. So two square brackets, then header and parentheses and a string canvas. These two fields are going to be named canvas restart. Alright, and now when we go back to the Unity editor, you can see that they are named. This is awesome, and you can immediately see what each of the fields does. And we want to add those five other fields. So the header is gonna say other, and the fields are as follows. Public audio manager, audio manager, because we want to use our audio manager, which we've created in the previous tutorial. That's because we want to play win sound and lose sound. Then we also want to keep track of public score script. Score script, because we will be resetting the scores when we launch the game again. And we also want to keep track of puck script, player movement and AI script. Alright, and now it's a good time to go to the audio manager and add new sounds. So we want to add public audio clip last game and also one game. And similarly, we want to add methods to play them. So public void play last game. And inside here, the contents are going to be basically the same as play goal. So audio source dot play one shot. And we want to play one shot of last game. And we also want to similarly create a method of play one game. Awesome. So let's go back to the UI manager. And we want to add a public void method show restart canvas. And this method is gonna have one parameter, boolean did AI win. And by this parameter, we are gonna find out if we wanna show the win text or the lose text. Alright, then first up in this method, we wanna set time scale to be zero, so the game actually like freezes. So time.timescale is equal to zero. Next up, we wanna turn off canvas game, so canvas game dot set active false. And we want to turn on so that it shows canvas restart. So we also call the set active method on canvas restart, but this time the argument is true. And now if did AI win is true, we want to play the last game sound on audio manager. So audio manager dot play last game. And we want to hide the win text and show the lose text similar to how we show and hide these canvas game objects and else. So if we won, we basically want to do the same thing as over here, but we want to play the one game sound and we want to show the win text just like this. And now you might be thinking from where this show restart canvas method is going to be called. Well, it's going to be called from score script. The way that this is going to be called is pretty simple. So first let's add a region scores. This is just for organizational purposes. It doesn't have no other meaning. And once we have this done, we want to create properties. Properties act like fields, but each time that you get the value from them or set the value inside them, you can call some methods and just have some code run. So private int AI score, but this time this is going to be with capital A, two curly braces, and we want to add a getter, so get. And when we get the value, we want to return AI score with lowercase a, which is this field. So that's pretty simple. And in the setter, we want to set AI score to be equal to value. And this value is a keyword. And it's something like an implicit parameter. That's the value that you set this property to be equal to in other parts of the code. And now we want to add a public int max score. This is going to determine how many goals we can have before the game wants to restart and back to the setter in the property. So if value is equal to max score, we want to call the show restart canvas method that we just wrote in the UI manager a little while ago. For this, we want to have the instance of UI manager script. So we want to go back up and we want to add yet another field. It's of type UI manager and it's also going to be called UI manager with lowercase u, just like this. And now we can go back to the setter again and we want to call show restart canvas method on UI manager. And because we are in the AI score property, we want to set this boolean did AI win to be equal to true. Now we can just copy this property and we want to paste it and it's going to be called player score. It's also going to return player score in the getter and also in the setter, it's going to set player score. And when the value is equal to max score, it's also going to show restart canvas, but this time the player won. So this is going to be false. Alright, then we can go to the Unity editor 
And let's populate these fields. So canvas game, we want to drag it over here. Canvas restart, similar thing. And now win text and lose text. For audio manager, we want to drag the whole scene manager over here. And similar goes for score script. Puck script is located on the puck, player movement on the player red, and AI script on AI blue. Whew, that's a lot of dragging and dropping. But we are not done yet, because we have to drag the UI manager to the score script, so again drag the whole scene manager over here. The max score for now is gonna be equal to 2, so we can test it nicely. And we also wanna set up last game and one game audio clips. So let's go to the casual game sounds. And last game is gonna be the clip 43. And one game is gonna be the clip with number 12. And I have almost forgotten about one thing, so we cannot test just yet. We have to go back to the score script, and inside here we want to find the increment method. And here we are incrementing AI score and player score, but this time we want to increment the properties, so AI score with capital A and player score also with capital P. Because when we increment properties, this code is going to run. And once we have that, we can test if everything works, and we are obviously not just yet gonna be able to click on the restart button and restart the game, but we are gonna add this functionality in just a little while. So let's let the AI win. And we lose, and this restart button is obviously doing nothing just yet. And when we restart the old-fashioned way, and this time we are gonna win because we are gonna drag the puck into the net. We win! And the sound plays and everything is nice and happy. And now let's add a method which is gonna be called when this restart button is pressed. So again in the UI manager we wanna add a public void method restart game. Previously we've set the time scale to be equal to zero, which has effectively frozen the game. When the game is restarted, we want to set the timescale to be equal to 1. This is going to make the game run normally again. We also want to enable canvas game, so canvas game dot set active true. And we want to disable the canvas restart. And because a new game is starting, we want to reset the scores from the previous game. So we want to go to score script, and we want to create public void reset scores. Inside here we want to set both scores AI score and player score to be equal to 0 and also AI score text and player score text is gonna say 0. Just like this. So back to the UI manager and we want to call score script dot reset scores. We also want to center the puck position. So let's go to the puck script and let's add a method called center puck. The contents of this method are gonna be fairly simple, so rb.position is equal to new vector 2, and the x and y coordinates of this vector 2 are both 0. Back to the UI manager again, we wanna call the puck script puck method. And the last thing that we need to do in this restart game method is that we need to reset the position of both players. Let's do it with the real player first, so let's go to player movement script, and we want to add a private field vector to starting position and in the start method we are going to set this starting position to be equal to rb.position just like this and then all the way down inside this script we want to create a public void reset position method and inside here we want to set rb.position to be equal to starting position and we want to do the same thing in AI script this time we do not need to create yet another starting position vector to private field because we have created one before. So all we need to do here is to create public void reset position and we also want to set rb.position to be equal to starting position. Alright then let's go back to the UI manager and we want to call these two methods on player movement and AI script. And now comes the last thing, let's go back to the unity editor. And in this onclick event inside this restart button, we are gonna specify which method it should call. So let's click on this plus. The game object is scene manager, and we wanna call a method from UI manager, and the name of the method is restart game. So let's test if everything works. When we score two goals into our own net, it's gonna say we lost, which is really sad, but it's true actually. So we lose. 
and when we press on restart and check these positions so this is over here our player is a bit to the right and this puck is inside our net and when we press on restart everything is reset to the starting positions which is completely cool thank you so much for watching this tutorial and i hope that it helped you and that you also enjoyed it if so don't forget to give this video a like and also share it with others if you don't wanna miss more videos like this subscribe to this channel and also consider hitting the bell button to get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If you have something to say, if you wanna suggest something, or if you just wanna say hi, leave a comment down below, follow me on social media, and see you in the next video.